crumbly stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can give that. A... How long does it take for it to? Uh, they start decomposing it like, in a, like this apple is a full apple that is starting to go rotten. Maybe like two weeks ago. Uh, they do it very quickly. To get a good amount of compost, like this whole bin, it can take anywhere from six months to a year. But uh, but otherwise, it's yeah, they they decompose things very quickly. But to get a to get a substantial amount of compost takes a little while, a couple of months. But you can, and we do. Oh okay, great. Oh, you got the brush right. Yeah. But how do you prevent the fruit flies? Does it, does uh, it happen often? Yeah, the most important way to prevent fruit flies is always having... Okay. When they start laying their eggs, that's when the big problem. Okay. Also, the when you put the food in, if you cut it up into smaller pieces, uh-huh. everything can decompose it quicker, and okay. then it's less attractive to the fruit flies. Uh-huh. So definitely keeping lots of shredded paper. Like this one, I would even add a little bit more, because you want, you want like an inch... The three inches of shredded paper always on top of everything. Okay. And um, like where? This, would that's you what this is meant up, meant for. Okay. If you have enough room underneath your sink, uh, your kitchen sink. Oh, okay. That's the easiest way. You can okay. use. You don't have to use this size yeah. bin. You can use a bin that suits your size better. I have a a bin. It's maybe a little bit taller, but it's skinnier, okay. and I can let you have a small space underneath my sink. Um, but otherwise, in the closet, they don't need any light. So, in a cabinet, a closet, underneath a table, uh-huh. anywhere where you can put it. Okay. The reason I recommend underneath your kitchen sink is because that's where you're going to be cutting up your vegetables. Yes, yes. Then you can put it yes. right in there. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yeah, we actually have a class that we come to on the May 15th. You can uh, learn more about taking care of these worms, and then you, for $10, you can actually get one of these bins and a voucher okay. for a pound of worms, which, and then you'll okay. be started. All you need to do is shred your paper, okay. get your worms, which you yes. send away, and they send them in the mail to you. Oh, they send them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, you, uh, then you're ready to start feeding them once you get your worms. How, how big can they grow into? The ones I showed you were about as big as they, they get. get. They don't get much bigger than and big. they, they maybe do maybe a little bit fatter and a little bit longer, but oh, not okay. much bigger. Wow. Are they like family with the earthworms? Yeah, they're they're closely related to the bigger earthworms that you might find yeah. in your garden, mm-hmm. but they're they're not the same type of worms. Those okay. worms like to dig deep dig. burrows, whereas this one these they were, so that type of worm wouldn't be happy in here. Uh-huh. These worms were chosen because they like to live in, they're fine in like leaf piles, like where there's decomposing, where there's mm-hmm. plant material breaking down. These worms just stay right where that is. They, and they constantly eat and they uh, turn it all. Actually, it's not yeah. the top of my head, but well, just if you type there. in yeah. uh, compost yeah. worm. And make sure they're called red wigglers. Oh, okay. That's the type of one. They're called red wigglers. Okay. So you could do like red wigglers to do a search on the internet. Yeah, that's kind of I understand what Paul was saying. I'm sure you'll find that he was like deep. one was bulkier than the other, but he and then uh, they'll bring them to Union Square Farmers Market. Yeah, there's like a uh, slot.